Jim Abbott has a no-hitter. And the pitch is in for a strike. Indians have not had a man pass first base. Jim Abbott is a name that sparks respect and admiration in the eyes of millions of people. Despite being born without a right hand, Jim became a major league pitcher who threw an amazing no-hitter with the Yankees back in 1993. And today, I had the opportunity to sit down with Jim, hear about his major league career, how he was able to work past his limitations, and be able to inspire millions of people, both on and off the field. And so, Jim, firstly, I'd like to thank you for the honor and opportunity to speak with you today. My pleasure. I'm looking forward to it. I'd like to begin by asking, looking back over the course of your career and all the years that preceded it, that were filled with a tremendous amount of hard work, what was your mindset like that pushed you and allowed you to become such a great major league pitcher? What drives you is, is it's a passion. And, and, and you love it. And and mm -hmm. I loved sports. I loved baseball. So I went to bed at night thinking about it. I woke up in the morning thinking about it. I don't think a lot of athletes think of it as work. I think they think of it as, you know, an opportunity, a chance to prove themselves. And it makes that, that extra set of weights easier to do, the, the sprints easier to do because it's, it's what you love to do. And, you know, frankly, that's hard to replicate. Sports is a cruel business at the same time because you can only do it for so long and then you're out in the real world. You can find things that you really like, but it's hard to find something that you love as much as, as, as that pursuit of excellence uh, you know, on a sporting team. It's so interesting that you bring that up. I've heard that from just about every single athlete, former player that I've ever spoken to. Was that something that you had a difficulty finding once you retired as well? I did. You know, a sporting life, anyone will tell you, growing up is very structured. You know, you have coaches uh, planning your day. You you know, you you have you become pretty good at time management because people tell you exactly where to be and what to do. You have an itinerary on the road. You know where you have to be, and and then all of a sudden there's all this freedom. That was that's a tough transition for a lot of people. And I know you know some people are really plan ahead and do a great job with it, and, and other people really struggle with it. What were some of the things that interested you? when you retired that you were able to say, you know what, this is something that I have the time to pursue and this is something that I really want to get into. Well, I was pretty fortunate in some ways. I mean, my story is, you know, the fact that I grew up missing my right hand. My playing days were different than other, you know, sports figures, I guess. And some people approached me about doing some speaking and, you know, I felt like there was something to share. If I could create a, a talk, you know, a presentation, that could kind of encapsulate these experiences that I had, it might be fun and it might be rewarding and others might, you know, in some way learn from it or benefit from it or be inspired by it. Have you been able to enjoy some of the feedback? It's been amazing. Talk about reward. You know, some of the kids that I met in Yankee Stadium years ago are, are now grown up, you know, and they're, they're doing incredible things, you know, guys who are, you know, MMA fighters and, and college basketball players and and doing all sorts of crazy fun things. Yeah. And I still communicate here from families and kids in those positions. And, and, and that's, you know, incredibly rewarding. And today, today's day and age, you know, social media makes it so easy to share, you know, share experiences and what you're doing and, and, and to have those role models. It was harder when I was growing up to, because you, know, you just didn't have so much content to look at, to say, oh, hey, look at what that kid's doing or look at what this guy's doing right. or this girl. Right. And I'm sure there must have been moments where you sort of looked at yourself in the mirror and said, you know what, you know, maybe this is just too hard or unrealistic. First of all, were there any of those moments? And what were some of the things that you sort of gave to yourself that helped you get past it and keep moving to accomplish the amazing, incredible things that you've done? I had a real driving ambition. You know, I really, really wanted to succeed. You know, I took losing very hard and winning seemed fleeting to me and, and I wanted to move on to the next challenge. The mindset that you must have had as a young kid to believe in yourself that despite the handicap that you had, that you can do it. What age did you really start working at it and really build that conviction that you could become a major league player? I was faced with a lot of uncertainty growing up. I wasn't always the most competent kid. 
you know, one, one of the things that I try to share now is, is how much I benefited from the generosity and, and the kindness of others. But I wasn't the most assertive kid as, you know, I didn't insinuate myself into situations. It was a, lo a lot of encouragement and mentorship from, from people in my hometown of Flint, Michigan, and, and uh, it made all the difference in my life. I didn't know how to tie my shoes. My second grade teacher, Don Clarks, picked up on that, you know, and, and he went home and didn't say anything to me about it, but went home and figured out a way to tie shoes and, you know, helped me, you know, come into class and pulling me out in the hallway and working on those loops and those laces. and. And that's the way I use to tie my shoes to this day. I've heard so many different analogies with different skills from players about how many important traits that they learned and that were cultivated by playing sports. If there was one that you could point to that you really were able to develop because you played in sports that really carried over into so many other things that you've done, what would that one thing be? My favorite principle that I speak when I speak to people is, is trust, is, is belief. You know, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. You may do the same thing every single day. You may make the same call selling the same product. Whoever can put the most of themselves into those calls, whoever shows the most belief in what they are bringing to the other person is usually the most successful. Wow, that's terrific. I want to end with this last question. And this has been absolutely phenomenal for me. If you had the opportunity to take a look back and you could choose one thing that you could tell yourself either to redo, to add, one key bit of advice, what would that be? I would just say be forgiving of yourself to learn from mistakes instead of letting them sort of corrosively eat at you. Uh, I think that would be one thing that I would love to see my kids be able to do um, and something I wish I would have done better in my playing days.